what is up everybody welcome back to Mount MoGraph as always my name's Matt and we're gonna do a video today today's summit is summit 74 rubber hose rigging inside Adobe After Effects uh, it's something I'm really excited about as you can see I also had tons of coffee and this is my second time recording the video because I didn't record it the first time uh, which was just a dream uh, so anyway as you can see here um, I have these little characters on the screen and unlike what you would normally do with character rigging there's no puppet pins it's all based on shape layers uh, using this tool called rubber hose so my friend Adam made rubber hose um, you can go to the site um, I'll put links to all this in the description below but battleaxe.co um, he cool he builds brutal tools for after effects which is a pretty nice tagline and right now he's got two tools he's got the rubber hose which we're gonna use today and a butt gapper which is free and uh, also very nice so totally check that out um, but yeah, so this video is going to use it. It is a paid tool, so if you don't have it, I don't know if the video is going to be interesting, um, just as a disclaimer, uh, but it is a super powerful way to rig and animate and create characters inside After Effects. And as you can see, there's tons of flexibility with what you can do, and it's got a really nice set of tools that you can use just to make your life easier. So uh, as you can see, there's tons and tons of examples. I'm not going to go too much through the site, but you can totally check it out and uh, see for yourself that there's wonderful things to do with it um, but I'm gonna go over today just how I like to set up these rigs and uh, kind of the cool little like controls and sneaky things you can do to make it really easy and really fast so uh, we're probably gonna do I think this one took maybe like 15 minutes from start to finish uh, with the animation and the whole character build and everything um, all inside After Effects and this one was maybe 10 minutes so we might do something like this um, and the really powerful thing about the system is unlike puppet pins, uh, this is always going to be continually rasterized. So that means that you're never going to get like weird jitters or anything like that um, when you do the animation uh, when puppet pins kind of can't be continually rasterized. So if you've ever experienced a problem using a tool like maybe Duik or something like that, um, this is a really awesome solution to uh, just animating your characters. So sorry for the long intro there. Uh, I think I said I drank too much coffee, so I'm a little all over the place, but I'll do my best to get myself together. Um, as you can see, I have a different layout than normal for After Effects, and whenever you're doing character rigging, I find it's pretty helpful to have like more space for all your layers and properties. As you can see, there's not a ton, um, but it's nice to just be able to view everything instead of having it sit at the bottom down here. So uh, anyway, let's go ahead and just real quick, uh, I'll just create a rubber hose so you can see what it basically is. So there we go we have a rubber hose there's tons more you can do with it but at its most basic this is what it is um, so if you press uh, two E's on your keyboard or double tap E you're gonna see that it is a very expression heavy uh, system and there's some really really complex math going on in here that Adam figured out and it's really awesome so um, with that being said, After Effects 2015 is absolutely terrible and full of bugs. Oh, well, not absolutely terrible, but it's full of bugs. And as you can see, there's like a little bit of a lag with my mouse and um, the expression handling. And that's actually not because of all this stuff, believe it or not. It's just because whatever the new um, After Effects did, they made a big step back. If you used rubber hose in After Effects 2014, um, there is absolutely no lag with um, the bend or anything. So... Uh, I'm going to use 2015 just because I like to preview faster, um, but generally 2014 is a better way to um, use the rubber hose character rigging. So anyway, uh, there's another little segue there, but let's go ahead and just start creating it. So if you go into your preferences, um, you can create controller pairs. So if I wanted to call this one like crown and uh, we'll do a slash and head, um, I will just add that and press OK and then it's going to show up in our list down here. So you can create like custom. Um, uh, names for whatever the rubber hose you like to do but let's go ahead and just start making our character so um, yeah let's just jump into it so I'm gonna make the torso first uh, generally a good idea to get the body going so we're gonna do um, shoulder and hips so that would be the shoulder and hips and we're gonna click this button right here a uh, new rubber hose system and uh, well let's see where it is here I don't know what just happened. Oh, there it is. I don't know what was going on. That was pretty funky, huh? But uh, anyway, so we have our hips. So we're going to put these uh, where you would ha expect hips to be. And we're going to take our shoulders and move it up here. So this system has a lot more control than what uh, we're doing right now. And I'm going to jump right into it. But one thing I do like to do is uh, click this button. 
and that's going to turn off the uh, mask and shape visibility. Uh, and I just find that this system works better with that off. Um, it's easier to see everything. So if we click our um, hip controller, uh, you're going to see that we have a rubber hose effect control and tons of functionality in it. And so the first thing I'm going to want to do is just change the bend direction to negative 100. So as you can see, it has changed in our viewport and now it's going to bend like this, which is uh, kind of what you would expect for a real person. And we're also going to just turn our length uh, maybe down a touch here. Let's go to like 410 or something. And uh, there we go. So we have the start of our character. We're going to just set up like the structure of him first, and then we'll go into the styling of the whole system. So that's pretty sweet. We're all set up with that. And while we're at it, why don't we create um, three little squares? Oh, that was also funky. I don't know what's going on with After Effects, that flashing. Um, that's always fun. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to duplicate this. I'll drag this to about where the hips are, duplicate it one more time and put it at the bottom there. So this one I'm going to call the ground control. Um, and this is just one of those things that I like to do with the characters. I feel like it makes the whole animation prop, uh, process a lot easier. I'll call this one the hip control and then the top one we're going to call shoulder control. So the whole system is based on parenting. And so I like to have these over on the side here uh, because we'll be connecting uh, certain uh, other limb controls to this. So it'll be really quick and easy. Uh, one other thing we're going to want to do is press Y on your uh, keyboard for the pan behind tool and just move that anchor point to roughly where the like the shoulder would be and then for this one we'll select it do the pan behind tool put this roughly where the hips will be and we'll take this one and just pretend that there's legs and we'll put that right down at the bottom so why we did that is because we can move this but we'll be moving our anchor point which is what stuff will be parented to so that's like the nice little trick to um have your controls out of the way. We'll also go over here and right click everything and change it to guide layers. And so what that means is when you do render, um, they won't show up in the render. They're just like secret layers. Um, so there you go. That's the character secret, um, secret guide layers. Let's go ahead and now create uh, some shoulder and wrist action here. So I'm going to call this one front arm. And we're going to create our uh, little limb here. And we're going to move our shoulder up to, oh, let's see here grab it and just move that up to um, the shoulder of our torso. I'll move this out and we'll once again change our bend direction. And for this one, why don't we go ahead and change our bend radius a little bit. So as you can see, we can actually uh, change that into a little bit of a bend there. That looks nice. And I'm going to make this a lot shorter. So I'm going to go to 150. Uh, we don't want it to be, well, maybe that was too short. Let's go to like 250 here. There we go. Uh, maybe even 300. I'm going to get crazy and now we have a nice limb and so what's cool about the rubber hose is it'll stretch and follow you but at the same time when you reach that um, hose length it will bend appropriately so as you can see this is going to be really really fun to um, go ahead and animate in just a little bit actually let's go ahead and knock this up to 400 get crazy uh, so there we go i like that that looks good let's go ahead and create the back arm. So with this one, I'm going to just call this back arm and I'm going to create a new rubber hose. So uh, what we're going to do is actually go to our front arm wrist and just copy the rubber hose control um, effect. And we'll go back to our back arm wrist and just paste it there. And now we're going to have the same properties. So there we go. We have the bend there. I'm going to move and position this uh, roughly where the shoulder will be and the back arm and we'll like I said we'll go in and style this and actually make a character instead of just a frame um, in a little bit so I'm going to move this back arm behind the torso uh, the front arm in front of the torso uh, the back arm we inch wrist and shoulder we're going to move under our uh, where is it here our shoulder control right here sorry uh, it's hard to see this stuff I didn't name them too well they're all kind of similar but uh, anyway, so there we go. We're starting to build our character. And actually what we're going to do is go and do a hip and ankle. And we're going to call this front leg. And since we're going to be lazy, we're going to create a new rubber hose. And actually just copy and paste that front arm wrist again. So copy it. We're going to go to our ankle and paste it. And there we go. We have the same property. But I kind of liked that amount of bend that looked nice. So that's our ankle. And we're going to want to change our bend direction to up to 100 on this one. So it actually bends forward. We'll move our hip up over here and there we go. We're starting to get a, uh, the makings of a character. And since it's a leg, we'll go ahead and make this 500 because it would be a longer uh, limb. 
So this is all starting to line up. It looks pretty sweet, if I can say that. And let's go ahead and create another new leg. And we're going to call this back leg. Um, create the limb. And we're going to take the ankle and put it down where you would expect. And we'll take the uh, hip and also put that where you would expect. And as you can see, this is a pretty derpy looking character. So let's go ahead and copy our ankle from the front leg, um, ankle effect control, and paste it onto the back leg. And there we go. We're starting to get this sweet character. So let's take a look at just parenting and why we made these uh, blue squares over on the side here. So what we're going to do is grab our back leg ankle and back leg hip we just got to do a little bit of housekeeping here and uh, just try to line stuff up appropriately front leg is going to be in front of the torso uh, or behind it depending on what the style is we can play with that later and i like to try to keep the controllers uh, these little yellow dudes um, somewhat related to how a character would be from top to bottom so as you can see we got the legs at the top let's put this actually at the bottom of everything so we have the back arm um, and I'm actually going to color color these uh, layers here if I can speak uh, Let's see. Oh, I've hid that. Uh, I'm trying my best today guys. I promise uh, <laughs> We're gonna change this to uh, lavender or maybe that is not the best choice purple We just need to make those look different than everything out else and then I'm actually gonna hide the layer uh, The label just because those get kind of stupid. So now I can actually see what's going on um, So let's start parenting some stuff uh, to our controllers, uh, which I believe are these. I should probably name these like in capitals or something so they stick out better. Let's put a couple dashes in front of them because that's cool. So these are going to be like my master controllers um, and that should be easier to distinguish them just by putting something in there. So there we go. And then we have our, let's see here. Grab these, put those at the top, and then we need to find our other control, our shoulder control. It all got mixed up in here. That's my fault. I'm sorry about that. And there we go. So I'll actually bring up that label one more time here. And since these are master controls, we'll give them a nice red color. There we go. So maybe I'll just keep that up. So uh, let's go ahead and grab our shoulders. So we got the front arm shoulder, back arm shoulder, and we're going to have the torso shoulder and we're just going to go and parent these to our shoulder control um, as that would make sense. So now what's cool is when I move my shoulder control, we're going to have all the stuff kind of changed together uh, really, really easy and quick. So command Z just to go back in time and uh, let's go ahead and parent our hips and stuff together. So we'll take the hip, the hip and the uh, there's another hip floating around here. There we go. And we'll parent this to our hip control. So uh, what I like to do is take the ankle controls and put these onto the ground control. So what's cool about that is then like if I want to do a quick jump, even if I have an animation, um, I have this like secondary control. So um, that's pretty nice. So we have the basic setup together and I like to keep these dudes just kind of uh, doing their own thing. Um, if you ever do experience some lag using the system in 2015, you can knock down your resolution to half resolution and then it'll get a little fuzzy. Um, but it's a little faster for the viewport. So there we go. We have the basics of our character. And I guess now we can probably jump into some styling of the character. So the first thing I want to do is jump to the back leg here or front leg, uh, your choice. You can get as crazy as you want. And this is where the rubber hose system is pretty sweet. So if you go down into your contents and go into the style, we have this thing called the base hose. And so right off the bat, what I like to do is add a trim path uh, to the base hose. And even if we don't use it right now, um, we have it. So also add a keyframe to your start and end. And the reason we do that is because now I can tap you on my keyboard to always pull up those properties, which is nice. And then we'll go to our stroke as well and set a keyframe on our stroke width. So what's awesome about this is, oh, and I guess we'll do the color too. Um, now when I press U on my keyboard, I'm gonna get all those properties real quick um, and I don't have to toggle down anymore, uh, at least for uh, this portion of it. So if you take your base hose, um, what makes this system powerful is you can duplicate it. So I'm gonna duplicate this and since this is a front leg, we're going to have the pant and then probably some like skin or something and maybe one other uh, property. So now when I press U, we're gonna see we do have a lot of keyframes, uh, but we can start adjusting stuff and playing around. So the first thing I wanna do is change the stroke width of the bottom layer. And as you can see, we're getting him nice and fat looking. 
and we're going to change this to just some skin tones here. So let's go with, uh, there we go. Awesome. So we'll go to, uh, the stroke width here and just turn our, um, end up, sorry, our end down. I mean, and I need to make that bigger so I could see what I'm actually changing, uh, change a color in there as well and change a color here as well. So let's start to see what we're getting here. I'll turn this back and there we go. We're starting to get a pant leg, um, which is nice. So let's do that and we'll put this one, actually we'll make a nice little like line here. So turn it, uh, the trim paths. Um, this is where it's like kind of, uh, you can style it however you would like. Uh, so I'm just doing something kind of silly here change my pant leg up to let's call it 80 uh whoopsie the wrong property yeah you kind of have to make whatever you like with this there's not like a right way to do it there's not a wrong way to do it um just whatever ends up looking good to you which is kind of the the generic answer and i'm sorry i don't have a better one but uh yeah like just play around and this is what's so fun is like just the character creation process if you're not trying to talk um, or had too much coffee, uh, is, is a ton of fun to do. And I've always enjoyed it, uh, since I started using it. So that's kind of why I like this whole system. So we'll turn this up and actually we will go into the style here. So for your base hose three, um, you can use the butt capper tool, but I'm just going to go through it manually just so we can really, uh, see what we're changing. And if you go to your line cap and change this to a butt cap, actually, uh, I'm guessing that's the name. We kind of have the end of our pant leg and that's kind of cool. So we'll also press U on our keyboard to see our keyframes, and we're gonna turn the end of this path uh, back a little bit. So now we almost have um, a nice little pant leg or something, and you can tweak this and add tons more stuff to this. Um, this is really just like a pretty basic overview for the video, um, or of the tool, but uh, if you guys like this, I will totally do a much more advanced one. Um, really getting into some cool stuff if uh, anyone is interested. So let's take our front leg and actually we're gonna go over to our rubber hose window again since we did the basic setup and we can actually copy and paste this um, style here. So if you click this button, we're going to copy the hose style and just go to our back leg and paste the style. And there we go. So this is where it starts to get super quick. Um, and you really don't have to waste any time. So if I go to my front arm, I'm going to paste the style as well. Um, and now he's just wearing like a jumpsuit or something. So we might want to press U, and our keyframes are going to carry over as well. And what we're going to do with this is probably make all the stroke width, um, a little bit smaller since their arms let's go with like 60 and everything will shrink appropriately we're gonna take our end here and just turn this back um, give him a nice t-shirt um, and maybe he wants to have a sweet bracelet on too if you uh, want to do that so we'll turn this back and um yeah it's, re it's really fun there's tons of stuff you can do I'm sorry I keep saying that but uh, I'm trying to be honest <laughs> uh, alright so we now have this wonderful little t-shirt going on for him and maybe let's change some colors just because uh the whole red jumpsuit thing is is probably no good um in today unless you're in the 70s wearing a nice uh canadian uh what is it canadian tuxedo i think is like those uh all jean shirts but uh there we go we have a nice blue um little shirt and what i'm going to do is just copy the front arm style and we will paste this onto our back arm here if i select the right layer so we'll go to our back arm and just paste the style and cool, we're starting to get that uh, character together in a matter of minutes, which is awesome. So now that I'm looking at it, uh, we probably need to do something with the torso. So let's go ahead and actually just paste our style. Um, and it looks like he's not wearing any pants or he's wearing a really awesome uh, belly shirt, which is incredible. But let's go into our um, press U just to get our little keyframe shortcut here that we created. And we're just going to go grab that bottom um, pant portion and turn up all our widths here. So just uh, hold command and, and click all your stroke widths and let's turn this up since it's his torso. Let's go to like maybe 200. And uh, well, that looks pretty incredible. Uh, Non-intentional, but I love it. Uh, we're probably not going to keep it though. So now let's go and change our trim path and try to give him like the bottom of a shirt here and maybe change our end. We'll just knock this down to something like this and then we'll go into our end here and also uh, just add a little bit more uh, 
to that. So as you can see, we're starting to get this issue where the rounding of this portion um, is kind of messing up the effect. So what is an easy way to fix this, if we go into our contents one more time, um, it can get confusing, but once you use it, it's like really, really straightforward, I promise. Um, we're gonna duplicate our rubber hose uh, two layer, which was the, the rounded one. Um, it's all like just like a layer hierarchy, so it's the they all sit on top of each other. So if we go in here, we're gonna change our round cap to a butt cap, and then we're gonna have to actually change our trim path a touch more um, down here. But as you can see, we have now fixed that issue, and uh, awesome. So we're really getting there, and in just a matter of minutes and a lot of blabber, we now still have this this wonderful rigged character that we set up and, and obviously if you get um, any like little little glitches like that, you can go in and change your trim path. Um, but just for the sake of the video, I'm gonna try to keep this pretty basic and, and easy um, for the most part. So um, actually with this front arm, uh, if we go into our color here, you can also just type in your search bar for the color if you'd like. Um, let's change this just a little bit just so we can kind of separate it from his shirt. Uh, I think I changed the wrong one. All right, so there we go. We'll do that, and then we can just copy this style and paste it onto our back arm. So there we go. Cool, it's all starting to come together. So let's go back to our shoulder joints for our arms. As you can see, they are both sitting in the middle, and since it's a back arm, you can kind of cheat it with the 2D style. And if you go to your back arm and go to the, uh, let's see, back arm shoulder, we're just gonna hold shift on our keyboard and kind of move that joint over, and that's already looking a little bit better. Um, cool, so we're getting there with our character like I said. Let's go ahead and add some shoes to this dude So I'm gonna just use the pen tool and not do anything too fancy, but we're just gonna draw a super basic shoe um, And in my case, this is pretty terrible um, That's like the worst thing I've ever made and we're gonna just if you hold option you can toggle your stroke um, and you can also turn it off and we're gonna add um, We'll give him some sweet kicks um, actually, that's like the same color as his skin. So let's go with uh, purple shoes because those are or pink shoes, even better, some slippers. And so when you do this, we're going to just move our anchor point right around here. I'm going to call this uh, front shoe. Uh, so when with this system, you can parent stuff super, super easy. So in this case, I'm going to put it on top of our um, all our shape layers so we can still see the controller. And I'm just going to uh, do something kind of cool. You can parent this to your controller. So in our case, that is the, um, I think this is the back leg uh, controller. So we'll go to back leg and go to back, where is it, back leg, ankle, and we'll parent it. So if I did this correctly, when I move this, the leg is going to move with the controller, which is pretty sweet. Um, so the one thing I don't like is, at least for me, is when I move this, it does rotate with the controller. Um, and personally, I like to animate feet a little separately. Uh, it makes it stick to the ground better. Better. So if you do Command Z, we're actually going to undo that parent relationship we just did, and press P on your keyboard for position, and also go to your um, back. Sorry, I'm losing uh, losing track of this back leg ankle and we're gonna also do the position So we're gonna do a super super little uh, easy expression And if you hold option and click it, we're gonna do something called like value one equals uh, And then we're just going to grab that layer Whoopsie, I don't know what I just did uh, So we're gonna grab that layer and we're going to just add it to our expression field So there we go And then we're gonna go down a little bit more here and do value one uh, to world uh, just I promise I'll explain it. And then value one um, dot to anchor or anchor point, I think it is. Let's see here. I think it's anchor point, um, if I remember correctly. And there we go. So that is our wonderful expression. So what we've done is we're calling out a value. Uh, so that is going to be our ankle right up here. Uh, so we're saying this property, uh, we want this to be related to the global position. So that's the two world. Um, in your composition and then what we want to do is make with based on the the global value of this whole composition we want to take the anchor point um, value of this so as you can see um, if I go and do this uh, we're gonna take that anchor point and we're gonna assign it to the position of our front shoe so sorry I, I did my best to explain it um, 
I will also put this little expression in the description of the video if you guys would like to see, but it's actually a really helpful one. Um, so what I'm gonna do is then use the pan behind tool, and as I change the uh, pan behind tool, our object is moving, but you're gonna see that our anchor point for this object stays exactly where it is. So now that we've done that, we are able to move the controller, uh, but the object is always going to be facing the same way um, like as the ground plane. So uh, that's like my personal preference for setting that up. Um, and we're also gonna go into our back leg here um, and change the color real quick. So if I press U to see our little cheat way to um, see all the colors, we're gonna change uh, just the color values just a touch, uh, maybe a little bit darker because it's the back arm or back leg. Uh, just so we can see uh, which leg is which. So there we go, it's pretty subtle. Uh, maybe I'll do a touch more here. Um, I'm not spending too much time on the character design. There we go, so we have a back leg um, that I definitely know about now. So that's pretty cool. So um, now what we wanna do is actually, we could make this even easier, but uh, I'm not gonna get too into expressions because I don't think many people uh, find them interesting. So I'm gonna do the front shoe, I'm gonna put right in front of the front leg because um, we don't want it to go in front of the torso or the arm. And then we're gonna duplicate this front shoe and put it in front of the back leg. And we're gonna call this uh, back shoe. So let's go ahead and take a look at our expression. So if we press E on our keyboard, we're gonna see that we made this, um, the little expression we type is also copied over here. And I'm just gonna change one word here. So I'm gonna change this to front leg ankle. And it's going to hop right over to the appropriate spot. And then I need to make sure that the uh, back shoe. Oh, you know, I signed these backwards. So we're gonna do this actually. I was just kidding. There we go. So now we have um, this cool little uh, way to keep our, our shoes facing the right way. And then uh, from there you can go and rotate them. If I select them properly. Uh, you can rotate them like separately for your animation, uh, which like I said, I like to do. So that's like the one super trick for the character rigging. And then you also have like the, the controls just for all the, the stuff together. Um, but yeah, it's super fun to do. So there we go. We're still going to keep working with him. Um, with the same thing, you can add the hands or if you just want them to rotate like a normal person and not uh, stay level with the ground plane, you can build a crappy hand like this and just grab the skin color here. There we go. And since we want that hand to just maybe like always stay on that layer, I'm going to put this in front of the front arm and I'm just going to parent this um, to the front arm uh, wrist here. So there we go. So now what this one will do is it will rotate appropriately. Um, and that actually does look good. But for the feet, I like to have those separate with that expression. So uh, with this uh, front arm, I'm going to call this front arm hand. That's cool. Uh, we'll duplicate that front arm hand and we're going to call this back arm hand. Um, type as fast as you want and get some cool names. Uh, put this above our back arm and we're going to actually parent this to our back arm wrist and it will just hop on over actually it didn't so we'll have to rotate this and just position it um, where we like so just drag that right over here uh, and that's pretty good so there we go we're starting to get our character together uh, sorry for the design I didn't really plan it out too good uh, but yeah so we're going to keep going along with this and then we'll uh be good for this basic overview. So uh, that's hilarious. I love the, the hip movement with this tool. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at a couple other things. Uh, so one of the things I like to do with character walks to make them more interesting is like, sure, it's really cool that he can bend and his spine is like this. Whoopsie. Uh, one thing I guess you're going to want to do with these controllers, um, these hand tools uh, right here is just make sure your anchor point is actually like where the controller is. That was uh, something I just forgot. That's why they just like detached. Uh, we'll grab our back arm hand and move this like that. So that's cool. Um, but now in theory, that won't happen again. Um, it still does. So maybe that's where we would wanna use our expression again um, that we wrote just so it's always parented properly. Um, should we do that? Uh, we won't do that now, but we might revisit if the video is not dragging too much because I don't want to waste your guys' time. So let's go ahead and just create a head tool, or not a head tool, we'll create a, a real quick head. Uh, nothing too fancy. Uh, so we'll give him a giant head, 
And just with that layer selected, we'll just change our color, actually turn off your fill. So hold option and toggle through there. Uh, we don't want a gradient. We want uh, nothing. And we're going to just pick under like kind of an orange color, a darker color. Oh, whoopsie. Looks like I've just done tons of mistakes here. Uh, we want this to be the skin color. We might need to make sure this is selected and we're going to draw just some eyes. And for that one, we're going to turn off the fill. Uh, like this and with a stroke we're gonna turn that on and we should have a little uh, face here eventually if it comes through oh it's too close in color so let me switch this one more time um, it's actually kind of a, a crazy thing to try to explain um, on the fly and build but uh, let's see here so I'll go into my stroke and just make this a little bit thinner we'll make it like 15 and we'll make a round cap just so we have a cool little eye and maybe change the color to something we can actually see. So there we go. And then we can just duplicate this shape and move it over. What the heck? After Effects is glitching out on me uh, with all this lagging junk. So there we go. I'll grab my shape two or shape three. And there we go. It's really struggling. Look at this. That is no good. Um, so there we go. We have this nice face and it is attached to the body. So with this, uh, we can go ahead and call this the head and we'll just put our anchor point in the bottom corner real quick. And that actually might be nice. So with the head, I'm going to just parent this to the uh, torso shoulder. So you can grab your head, put it above everything and parent this to the torso uh, shoulder right here. And now that it's parented, it should rotate properly. Um, there we go. Yeah, so that works. Um, our hands are still having those issues. So um, I like that I picked the wrong color for this head here. So I'm going to do color. Just type that in. Uh, grab our fill color and just give him the same color as his arms. Uh, otherwise, he got pretty sunburned. And we are going to go back to these two hands and just kind of fix them. Uh, so we'll do uh, the same expression if we do P on our keyboard. We'll go to our front shoe and you can grab this properly. So we'll copy this and we'll paste that onto that. And with this one, we are going to want to grab the uh, wrist control for the front arm. So we'll go to our front arm and front arm wrist. Just give it that and... Where the heck is it gone? I think it's, uh, I did this backwards. So there we go, paste that there. And this one, I hope I'm not making this worse. This video is going fine uh, until I have ruined everything. So let's see. Oh, so now that we have that expression, you actually don't want to have them parented um, because then you're kind of dealing with uh, two different like relationships, which is no good. Uh, so we'll just rotate this appropriately um, till we're happy with it. And this one uh, needs to get fixed and rotate. So that is all like what, like I said, uh, it's based off the anchor point. So when you move the anchor point, the wrist will move, uh, but the anchor point will still be locked in spot uh, or in the, in the correct spot. So when you have this set up like this, um, I'm sure there's other ways to do it. It is not going to rotate with the arm. Um, I think it only was having that problem uh, because these controls I didn't set up with the uh, two world expression. So everything was uh, getting a little goofy. So I do apologize about that. Um, anyway, so this video, I guess I'll probably wrap up right there for just building your first super basic um, rubber hose rig. Uh, if you guys did like this video or would like to see another one, uh, please leave a comment, uh, like the video, um, or dislike it if you didn't like it because I was all over the place, which I would understand. Um, but in just a couple minutes, once you're using the tool and not talking, uh, you can put together a little run cycle in no time at all like this. Um, or if you spend 15 minutes, you can get a character that does uh, also has broken hips, um, but has the nice uh, shoe action so with this one however I parented it um, and this actually does have those controls uh, that I was talking about um, if I bring them up you're gonna see I also did what uh, we just did in the video and uh, yeah I, I did the shoes separately but I think the hands I did parent properly but uh, yeah so we made this little dude um, one of the worst characters of all time 
uh, in today's video. But yeah, this was Summit 74, rubber hose rigging inside After Effects. Uh, thanks so much for checking out the video, uh, and let me know what you thought. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.